Welcome to Digital Asset News, this is Rob, and uh, this week I'll be out uh, for vacation, but uh, there was a video we did about a year ago, and uh, the information that we put out back then is just as valuable as it is today. And what we're going to talk about is some sage words of advice uh, from one of the only gentlemen, one of the few, to beat the S&P 500 uh, as far as the hedge fund, that is Peter Lynch. And he's going to give you some of probably the best investment advice I have ever heard in my life and how it pertains today in this bear market and of course in the eventual bull market which uh, are just a natural cycle. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to just turn it over to Peter Lynch. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, this is some of the best advice I've ever seen as far as investing. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look as uh, we're going to take a trip down memory lane and uh, take a listen to Peter Lynch. Uh, he was the uh, president of the uh, Magellan Hedge Fund, which is one of the most successful hedge funds almost of all time. It uh, outdid the S&P 500 uh, numerous years. And he's going to talk about how there's a lot of things to be concerned about, and you really shouldn't be too concerned about these things, on top of the fact that uh, what goes up must come down. And then if we just kind of let go of some of the fears, usually things work themselves out. And uh, we'll take a look at what's going on there. On top of the fact that Wells Fargo starts offering crypto investments to clients, which is kind of odd because they just told uh, everybody to stay away. Now, all of a sudden, uh, just like every other bank and, and institution out there, now they're all getting back into cryptocurrency digital assets and offering it to their wealthy clients. Surprise, surprise. And then we'll take a look at Cardano finally getting approval for listing in the tough Japanese market. This is great news as far as uh, in the Asian markets, but this is right on the heels of Cardano coming out with their smart contracts as the Alonzo integration rolls forward. And we'll see that uh, around September. And then finally, we'll take a look at uh, what's going on with the charity for the DNews Cardano stake right. pool. So, so what I really want to do is just get into today's top story, which is, of course, the Peter Lynch crypto lessons. And I found this one fascinating. This one, it's from a YouTube channel called Investor Center. It's a definite uh, uh, subscribe to. I actually tweeted this out uh, two or three days ago. And uh, I'm just going to have Peter Lynch talk to you about what this was. This was back in 97. This was quite some time ago. And you might be asking yourself, if you're not familiar, like, who's Peter Lynch? And why is Rob talking about Peter Lynch? Who cares? Well, Peter Lynch, manager of the Magellan Fund at Fidelity uh, Investments between 77 and 1990. Uh, Lynch averaged a 30% annual return, which is consistently more than the S&P 500, uh, making it the best performing mutual fund in the world, and I think maybe perhaps ever. And what was shocking to me is that a 30% return, people are like, oh, well, it's just a mutual fund, but you know, how good is that? Well, over time, mutual funds don't do that hot. And if you remember this thing called Buffett's bet, uh, but Warren Buffett came out and said, look, you guys are overpricing everything. You're making it too complex. Everybody should just invest in the S&P 500 as far as an index fund. And, he's, and in 2008, he issued a challenge to the hedge fund industry, all of them, and said, uh, look, I will pay you a million dollars if you can beat uh, the S&P 500 over a specific amount of time. I think it was like a 10 years. And the only one that took him up was Protégé Partners. And uh, the, here's what happened. Protégé co-founder who left the fund in 2015, conceded defeat ahead of the contest scheduled wrap up on December 31st, 2017 states, for all intents and purposes, the game is over and I lost. So that's very telling, just so you know, that all of the hedge funds out there, I mean, a million dollars is nothing to sneeze at, right? And they all just said, nope, we're not taking that. Only one did it and they got the pants beat off them. So that's why it's so impressive to me that Peter Lynch could come here and do 30% which is way more than the S&P 500, which is roughly 10%. So he could three exit. So this is why I like to listen to smart money. So I'm just gonna let Peter talk to you about why it's just important just to calm down, take a look at uh, the big picture. And uh, it doesn't really matter if you don't know where things are going, because guess what? Neither did Peter Lynch. Let's take a listen. See, everybody's got the brain power to do well in the stock market. The question is whether you have the stomach. That's the key organ in the body. There's always something to worry about. In the 50s, it was depression and nuclear war. The 50s was the best decade this century for the stock market, except for the 80s. Only slightly better. The 80s only slightly better. People didn't expect a lot. We had an okay, it wasn't a great uh, decade. They just didn't expect much. We made it through. And the uh, stock market was terrific. Uh, do you remember when oil went from 4 to 40? Remember that? Remember that period? Oil went from 4 to 40, and the experts said it was going to go to 100, and all the countries of the world were going to go bankrupt. And then and the big banks are going to go bankrupt, and we're going to have a Great Depression, and the stock markets go down, and you're going to wind up selling pencils and apples. You know, 
the uh, buy one, oil went from four to 40, and the experts said it was going to go to 100. Within two years, oil was at 14. The experts, now much higher paid at this point, are saying it's going to go to four, and we have a depression. And people believe it again. You know, the, uh, I remember when the money supply was growing too fast. They said we're going to have a depression. Then it was growing too slow. We're going to have a depression. Remember the LDC debt? Remember the LDC debt, all the banks? Our banks were very smart. They lent all their net worth to Zimbabwe and Botswana and Botswana and all these countries, Chile, a lot of countries they can't pronounce. This is Chase Manhattan and Chemical and Manufacturers Hanover. These countries weren't doing so well. Then they were called undeveloped countries or less developed countries. Now you have to call them emerging countries. It's not politically correct to call anybody an undeveloped country. It's like I just found out the other day that the term for somebody that's overweight is laterally challenged. Yes, it is laterally challenged. Yeah, but these are LDC debt. They were all going to go bankrupt, and we're going to have a depression. Uh, then the Mideast was going to the world. Remember that one? The Mideast was going to the world. They weren't going to buy our bonds, and the market crashed, and we're going to have a depression. Then Japan was going to the world. Remember that one? Japan was going to have all the assets, and they weren't going to buy our bonds, and we're going to have a depression. Within three years, the Nikkei Dow had gone from 40,000 to 16,000. The banking system was in trouble, and people said Japan was going to collapse, and we're going to have a depression. So I have no idea when the market's going to go down, and uh, no idea when it's going to go up. I'm totally shocked the market was 4,000 one and a half years ago, and a little while ago it was 8,000. Uh, I had no idea about this. Uh, very surprised to me. But I'll guarantee you the market will be a lot higher in 15 years. It'll be a lot higher in 25 years. What it's going to do in the next one or two years, I don't have any idea. And if somebody in this room knows about it, they're not telling anyone. Or they're not in this room. They're down in Palm Springs somewhere. You know, so, yeah, again, so how many people do you know that could have gotten into... I mean, even just stocks uh, and, or mostly cryptocurrency years ago, but they were told, no, no, too risky. No, no, it's going to get banned. No, no, China's doing this. No, no, American government's doing this. No, no, the banks don't approve of it. Da, 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 da. Down, down you go. And now here we are and um, nobody knows. Nobody has any idea. But I mean, again, one of the best investors of all time is like, I had no idea, but all he did was play the long game. And that's the ones who usually make the best gains, just the ones that play the long game and are patient. And then the last one, I'm gonna just finish up with this. And this is just a, a quick timeline of just how much, how expansive things are as far as in the traditional market and how I think it's gonna carry over to the crypto markets. Take a listen. I don't worry about that. I know we've had uh, 96 years of century and the market's fallen 53 times. We've had 53 declines of 10% or more. So 53 declines in 96 years, once every two years we have a 10% decline. Of the 53 declines, 15, one five, have been 25 percent. So 15 in 96 years, about once every six years, the market falls 25 percent. That's what we call a bear market. You know, you know that. And it's going to happen. I don't care when it's going to happen. I would love to know. I obviously, it would be very useful to know when it's going to happen. It doesn't make a difference to me. Corporate profits will be a lot higher eight years from now, a lot higher 16 years from now, a lot higher 30 years from now. That's what I deal with. Exactly. He just, he pretty much just told you his whole secret. He's like, I don't care what's going to happen the next month, two months, six months, a year, two years. I'm in it for the long haul. And that's what I'm all about. And that's pretty much the same thing here. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or a month. I see good things, uh, you know, coming up, but I can't tell you when. And again, what goes down, I think will go up eventually. It's not like it's, it goes all the way down. Even like, here's a great example, even Hertz Rent-A-Car which was being made a fun of by everybody because all the uh, millennial investors and Gen X and Gen Y and Gen Z or whatever else it is, they were piling into Hertz because it was such a low stock to buy. But guess what, it was in bankruptcy. And they're making fun of them like, you morons, you have no idea. But guess what, all they had to do was wait. And they came out of bankruptcy. And guess, guess who got rewarded the most? <laughs> the ones who paid for Hertz Rent-A-Car. And I don't know how much it is right now, but uh, those guys made a killing. So again, uh, just taking a look at history from the, you know, lessons from the past, you can kind of see where things are going. Don't look at the short term. When in doubt, zoom out. I see there's a lot of good things. I could care less. I couldn't, excuse me, I couldn't care less about what's going on today or tomorrow or next week or a month or six months. I see some good things happening. I just don't know when.